And that's when she said, I'll, um, Wow. Yeah. I mean, talk about signals, missed signals, um, learning lessons the hard way. <laughs> Brutal. Yeah. Uh, but also, I mean, story of my life. I could, yeah. I could talk about similar things where I just, I had literally had to get beat up yeah. and continue making the same mistakes. So very relatable. Yeah. Um, but, oof. Okay. Yeah. So, Wow. I'll speed the rest up. So yeah, no, you're we, good. We, uh, there's just so much. It's so uh, fascinating. There's, we're like not even, there's way more bad that happens after that. Um, so, but the, the thing is, is I'm telling this, in, it's all, all this happened in like a nine month period. So this was just insane. And so like my mother getting sick, the ending of the partnerships, the new partnership, the money get, getting taken, my DUI head-on collision. So the head-on collision actually was the next big catalyst for me. Because that was yet again, I was faced with my own mortality, and I it it re reprioritized things again. It was like, hey, idiot, yeah. And so I, at that point, I had a partner that I had two marketing agencies with. By the way, started that on the side, um, a chiropractor and a, and a dental agency. I had my five gym locations with a different partner. I had now the one current location that I had started with the new partner, mm-hmm. right. And I had the launch business where we're launching, turning around and doing launches. And I'm 26. Yeah. I'm imagining, you know, those plate spinners. Yeah. You've got at least nine plates yeah. going. I was drinking a half a bottle of Johnny Walker Black every night to function, not to, like, not to get drunk, to not, to feel back to not being stressed. That was the only thing. Yeah. And, um, like, some people have, like, like, I would never have called myself an alcoholic because it was, like, I still function fine. I never was drunk at work or anything like that. I just, every night I would just drink that to like breathe. Yeah. Um, that was your escape. Yeah, it was. It was very much escape because I wasn't handling the things that I needed to handle. And so I had a coach at that time who was more really more of just a therapist. And he said, Alex, your stress is literally going to kill you. And so that was right after I had the, the DUI and the head on collision. And so he said, you need to change stuff. Like, what are you afraid of? You, you almost died. So Fuck it. (laughs) And so I ended that partnership. I ended the partnership with the agencies. I, I believe it or not, even after the money was taken, I was still in a partnership with him. Um, cause I was like, maybe he's right. Like I knew, I knew that it was fraudulent when I showed him the financials and highlighted everything and was like, there's no other money that was here and he didn't want to look at it. And that's when I was like, Oh, he, he doesn't actually think that I took the money. He, he was making a reason up. So, so anyways, I got out of all of that stuff. I lost all my money and then I was back at zero. And this was now, this was November of 16. So I'm now three or four years later from me opening the gym on the floor. So all, a lot of this stuff happened quickly. Um, at that point, uh, we went to go launch a gym because Layla was like, hey, I quit my job for this. So, you know, can we like still do the thing you said you were going to do? Yeah. And so we, we realized that, okay, I'm going all in on the gym launch business. Um, and I went to go launch this gym in San Diego and this guy had reached out to me because he'd like followed me because I made some content about gym stuff, not much. Um, and he said, I've got a newborn kid. I really need this money. Like, let me sell for this, this gym. And he was, le- it just so happened to be 15 minutes from his house. Like I had gyms all over the nation that I was doing one at a time and he happened to reach out to me and it happened to be next to his house. So I figured, all right, maybe someone's looking out for this guy. Okay, cool. Sell it and it'll give me time to get all the materials ready so we can launch way more gyms next month. He crushed it, does $100,000 in sales, which was like a big launch. Um, And I owed him $22,000 in commissions. After Layla's launch and paying all the refunds and everything, I had $23,000. So I paid him the 22, and the $100,000 that I made from the sales never came. Because the processor, because of the refunds from the gym before, uh, shut us down and said, there's a regular activity, there's too many complaints, blah, 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 which was the reason why I shut a gym down right after, like, right. And so, they said, we're going to hold on to this hundred grand. And so I now had a thousand dollars total during this period of time before I knew that we weren't going to be able to get the money. Layla had told her six best friends to quit their jobs and join us at gym lunch. Oh, and so I find out on Christmas Eve at Layla's parents' house where I'm meeting them for the first time that I had one lost all my money two, all of her friends had quit their jobs and are going to start selling for us the next on the 26th. So two days later, and on that 26th, 3300 a day was going to start getting debited from my account 
because I didn't have the money that was supposed to be coming for that hundred grand. Mm -hmm. And so I sat Layla down and was like, I pulled the credit card out and I was like, I have a hundred thousand dollar limit on this card. And it was from all my gyms. It was like my master like working capital yeah. card. I was like, but I want you to know that like you can leave now and we're cool. Like I won't judge you like carte blanche. You can leave. And we're um, like, I, I was like, this has a very low likelihood of working. This is probably like a 10 to 15% shot that this actually works. And that's when she said, I'll, um, she's like, I'd sleep with you under a bridge if it came to that. And so that was when, that was when I knew that like, we were like, she was it, she was the one, she's with me, you know, ride or die. Like she's the girl I'm going to marry. Yeah. And so, um, what a moment. yeah, it was, it was great. <laughs> it was actually, honestly, I felt numb at the time, um, from everything, but later I can appreciate it. I mean, we were just sitting back, you know, <laughs> chopping it up, reminiscing about the good old days and all that, <laughs> you know, tracking my roots, where I came from and where I'm going. But like I say, man, always said it. It's not about the destination. It's all about the journey.